Eyeball Bakers, I wanted to pop up before the new year and say Happy New Year to everybody. It has been a crazy year. We released more content than ever, more videos than ever. We had the Academy and I wrote a second cookbook. So want of a better word, it has been a little bit mad around here. But I want to thank you as always for your support, your comments, your views, buying my second cookbook. Everything that you've done has really been amazing. Um, I want to know in the comments below what you want to see me make for 2023. It's a brand new year and we can do whatever we want here so I'd really love to know your suggestions. As a big thank you for all of your support I'm going to share with you a video on how you can make a show-stopping croc en bouche perfect for your New Year's Eve celebration or any big get-together. Check it out. So what is a croque en bouche? Well it is a classic French recipe. Traditionally they would have them at weddings, baptisms, communions, things like that, big celebrations. It is made up of choux buns, creme patisserie, all dipped in caramel. You're gonna be learning all of these different techniques and recipes. Also, I want you to get ready because we're going to be spinning sugar. So let's talk about our choux pastry first. This is the same pastry that you use to make profiteroles, cream puffs, it's an absolutely lovely dough and very easy. So here I have some all-purpose flour, which is plain flour, we have water, butter, a little bit of sugar in this dough, not much, and a little bit of salt for flavor, which is really important. Now, let's talk about these eggs that you're gonna need for your choux pastry. Choux pastry, sometimes people can find a little bit tricky. It can be a little bit stiff or too runny, and when they pipe it, it just spreads everywhere. So you want the right amount of eggs. So here I have eight large eggs. Now, I got a message from Jane, I think, in Australia, who made our creme brulee and said it didn't set because in Australia, her eggs were smaller than mine. So what I did for this recipe, which is important, I weighed these eggs. So you need 400 grams of eggs or 14 ounces. So I recommend you do that for this recipe just to make sure everything goes along smoothly. Okay, so now let's talk about the ingredients for the creme patisserie. We have milk here. I suggest using whole full fat milk for better flavor, a little bit of sugar. We have eggs and egg yolks. This is a thickened custard. So it's the usual suspects that you need. Here I have some cornstarch. Like I said, this is a thickened custard. The cornstarch is great because this means it's gluten-free. You can also use like a rice flour if you have to. Cornstarch is really great. I don't recommend using a regular flour. Have a little bit of butter here, which we add in at the end, and then some vanilla paste to give you that lovely color. If you have vanilla beans, then go for that. Use that, that's great. And then of course, the thing that we're all leading up to is the caramel that we're going to be making. So I have sugar, I've got water, and I've got cream of tartare. The cream of tartare is important for this one because it stops your caramel from crystallizing. Okie dokie, so those are our ingredients. Let's get started with the recipe. So here I have a nice, kind of like medium-sized saucepan. This is a big mixture. We're gonna make a big croque en bouche. So get a nice big pot. Heavy bottomed is preferable. We're making custard and it's delicate. So into this, I'm going to add in my milk. Do, 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 do. And remember the sugar? We're just gonna divide the sugar, like roughly half. Don't worry too much about that. We're gonna add the rest of it into the eggs. Now turn it on to a medium heat and we're just gonna let this mixture come to a simmer. While that's simmering, we're gonna come over here. Here I have my eggs and my egg yolks. I'm going to add the rest of the sugar into there and then also our cornstarch or our corn flour, which is our thickener. Then whisk these all together. So just leave that there until you're ready for it. It'll just be a few minutes. So there you go. Just takes three minutes or so to come to a simmer. So I'm gonna turn that off the heat. Here I have a ladle. Now what we're going to do now is called tempering. So we're going to add a little bit of the hot liquid into our eggs. Now this is why it's important to have these eggs at room temperature so they're not too shocked by the hot heat. So ladle by ladle, just whisk in your mixture. When you get enough milk in there to loosen it and kind of warm it up, then you can take the whole bowl and put everything back into the pot. Once it's back in your saucepan, turn on the heat to like a medium heat, make sure it's not too high. Then with our whisk, we're gonna go back in. Whisk constantly as we cook our custard and it thickens. Now you want to keep this moving because it is a custard and we don't want the eggs to cook separately and to kind of like curdle. Also, I'll give you a little tip. The bigger pot that you use, the faster it will actually cook. So just be careful not to use too small of a pot. Take care not to let this mixture boil. We do want it to simmer so that the cornstarch activates. 
We want to get this mixture nice and thick and so you know when it cools down completely it will actually be much thicker. So it's been around six or seven minutes and you'll start to see it thicken up really well like this. So what we're going to do is turn off the heat. Lovely. And the last thing we're going to do is just add in our little bit of salt, vanilla paste and butter. Then just whisk it all together. Super, let's remove it from the stove top and get it into a nice clean bowl. Pour the hot creme patisserie into a bowl and then directly cover the surface with cling wrap. This will prevent a skin from forming. Now, let this cool down at room temperature for a little bit before popping it into the fridge to chill completely. I strongly recommend you make your pastry creams a day before. It'll make life so much easier and you need it to be thick for piping. So we're making our shoe pastry. Here I am back at the stovetop. I've got a heavy bottom saucepan. Into this, I'm going to add in my water and my butter. Turn it onto a medium heat, let the butter melt and the water come to a simmer. Now, while it's doing that, let's mix together our dry ingredients. Remember, we have our flour. Just add in your little bit of sugar and your little bit of salt and then just give them a mix together. Okay, the butter is fully melted. Our water is simmering. Now let's dump in our flour and then with a whisk, stir it all together. At this point, I change over to a wooden spoon. And what we want to do is just cook our shoe pastry until it dries a little bit and forms a ball. This just takes around two minutes. You're not going for color or anything like that. We're just drying out the dough a little bit, just like this. Okay, lovely, this is done. I'm gonna remove it from the heat and then head over to my countertop where I've got my mixer ready to go. So this is our first step for cooking our dough. Now here's what we're going to do. I know it's still a little bit warm. We don't want this to hang around too much because it can form a skin. So I have my mixer here. Put your dough into your mixer. Just so you know, it's best to do this step by a machine because it's a big mixture and we've got a lot of eggs. Doing it by hand will be kind of tough, but it is possible. So onto our mixer there. We're just gonna mix this up. on a medium speed and just let it cool down a little bit before we start to add our room temperature eggs. So it's cooled down a little bit. So here I'm gonna go in with my eggs one at a time. Add in one. You'll see the mix kind of almost look like it's separating and curdling. Do not worry. It's gonna come back together. So there you go, you can see that. The way it kind of comes back together, this is why we add in one at a time. Go in again with another one. We're just going to add in the rest of our eggs until we get the consistency that we want. When you're adding in the eggs here, we want to use a paddle mixer or a K mixer and not a whisk. Okay, perfect. All our eggs went in there, but let's check for consistency because this is really what can make or break your shoe pastry. Look at that. See, it's lovely and thick and it's taking a while to fall off our spatula. So it's going to be easy to pipe, but it's not runny. This is how we know we use the right amount of eggs. So remember 400 grams or 14 ounces. Whew, okay, we're almost done. Now it's time to pipe these and get them into the oven. At this point, we're gonna preheat our oven. We're going to start it at 425 degrees Fahrenheit and we're gonna put it on convection. Now, the reason we're putting it on convection is we need that fan. We are putting in two trays at a time and we don't normally do that. We need the air to circulate and to bake our shoe buns. Also, we're going to be turning the heat down, so don't worry, they're not gonna bake all that time on that heat. So we're just gonna start out by using two trays. Now, I'm gonna place my stencil underneath the parchment paper because we are not going to pipe directly on the stencil. Now I have ready to go. So fill your piping bag. This is a little bit of a looser mix. So just like the macarons, we're gonna buy ourselves some insurance and fill it in a glass, just because it can be drippy. This is a big mixture of shoe pastry, so don't try and get it all in your piping bag at the one time. We're gonna have to refill it. We are going to be piping here, but on this stencil, we're gonna do every second circle because they puff up nice and big, which is what we want. We just wanna make sure that we don't do them too close together. So every second one, fill the circle. Go all the way to the edge, to that black line. A nice big dollop. These do puff up, but you want them to be lovely and big and puffy. So right in the middle, every second one. 
you kind of timed it but you pipe for like good squeeze two seconds good squeeze one two two seconds of piping see good squeeze one two two seconds of piping now move your stencil and continue on piping we are going directly above pulling away the piping bag so it has a peak but it's in the middle then go ahead and start doing your second pan and once you run out fill up your piping bag again when you need to okay lovely now the little last thing you want to do this is a chef's secret is have a little bit of water in a bowl and then just wet your fingers you see these little peaks that happen with your piping bag just go ahead and just push down those peaks with a little bit of water on your finger the only reason we're pushing them down is because we don't want them to burn in the oven if they're sticking up by themselves so just push it back in there and then last but not least I learned this tip I think when I was in college so not that long ago and what you do is just get your fingers sprinkle over a little bit of that water don't be worried about getting them wet when these drops of water hit that really hot oven it's going to create steam which will help these little buns to rise our oven is preheated so let's not waste any more time and let's get them into the oven so at 425 degrees Fahrenheit 220 degrees Celsius we're going to bake them for 10 minutes then without opening the door we're going to turn down the heat to 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 180 degrees Celsius and bake them for another 10 minutes and then we're going to come back and they're going to be golden brown and gorgeous these look fantastic I'm delighted they're lovely golden brown they're crispy and they're hollow in the middle this is what I'm going for look at that so while these are cooling turn back up that oven and bake off the rest of your shoe pastry we need a lot for this recipe so here we are at the assembly I've baked off all my profiteroles you're going to yield around 60 to 70 that's roughly how much I did I have some trays here ready to go and I have my creme patisserie in a piping bag so that's ready same nozzle as before so here's what I want you to do uh, pick up your profiteroles you get um, just, it doesn't have to be a sharp knife get a blunt knife or something where you can pierce in the bottom of your profiterole go around like this because they're kind of dry we're going to make a hole and that's where we're going to pipe into so our pastry is ready to be filled so get your your pastry cream in one hand Put the nozzle in that little hole that we just created do a one two squeeze there we go see that fill it up and then onto a prepared tray the reason that we do it in the bottom is so you can't see it in the end result just do a one two squeeze one two remember we need enough creme patisserie to get through all of these profiteroles so try and stagger it out as best you can one two there we go and keep on going until you fill them all all right that's my last one these are going to go into the fridge and stay nice and cool while we get started on our caramel next okay so this is the part you've all been waiting for the caramel making so I don't need to worry it's really easy we've done it before we even did it in our macaron class so in a heavy bottom saucepan I'm going to add in my sugar water and cream of tartare now remember I said the cream of tartare is to stop it from crystallizing so that's important and then turn it on a medium heat and we just want to let this sugar dissolve in the water we can give it a little stir before we start to let it simmer once your mixture comes to a simmer it is going to take a few minutes until the caramel starts to form but when it does it's going to do it fast we don't want to get this caramel too dark so you want kind of like an amber color like I said you don't want to stir it at this stage if you want to lift up the pot however and twirl it around that is totally fine so this is the color I want check that out not too dark so remove it from the heat swiftly carefully carry it over and we're going to dip our shoe buns so here's our caramel I have my profiteroles back out of the fridge now I want you to be really careful here we're going to be dipping the profiteroles so I want you to wear a glove if you have it but we're going to also use tongs if you need it whatever you find most easiest and safest I want you to do this also take your time you're in no rush so we're going to take a profiterole and the first thing you do is you just dip the top just like this just a little dip you're not trying to coat the whole thing just dip the top back onto the sheet pan and just continue dipping the tops 
of all of them because this side is actually going to be the beauty side, the lovely side that you're going to see of the croque en bouche. So we just want to make sure that it has this lovely caramel on it. Now while you're doing this, if it's taking you some time and your caramel gets cold, pop it onto the heat again on a low heat, let it dissolve and then it will be ready to go again. At this point, I'm going to start using my thongs for everyone because the caramel is getting less and less and I want to be careful of my fingers. So there we go. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to get our serving platter. I'm going to pop this back on the stove top, let it heat up again, because what we're going to do now is assemble it and make our beautiful dessert. So our caramel is nice and runny again to use. I have my platter. You want something around eight to nine inches. Take your bun, dip it into a little bit of caramel on the side and place it on your platter. Now we just want a tiny dot of caramel to hold it down in place. There we go. And then all you do is place them with that beautiful caramel top facing outwards because that's our beauty. And then just stick it down with the caramel. And if you stick them all side by side, nice and tight, they'll all stand up. Fill in the hole with some more buns and that will help when we're building our structure. And then same again, continue to dip on the bottom and stick it down. Again, fill in this circle with more buns just to help hold up the structure. Continue building up, take your time, and then eventually you will get to the top. So now you have a little bit of caramel left over in your pot and it is nice and cool. This is what we're going to use for spinning the sugar. So as you can see, it's kind of pliable. What we're going to do is take this and go around the croc en bouche, just like that. Go around and around. <laughs> I bet you didn't know you could do this. Gorgeous. And then last but not least, I like to put in a few flowers from my garden. There's a little bit of baby's breath and some rose petals. Amazing. I know a lot of work went into this and there was a lot of different steps. We learned a lot, but look at this. Absolutely gorgeous. Invite your friends over, your family. You're going to want to have a big gang of people to enjoy this absolute masterpiece. It seems almost criminal to take a piece away and bite it. Gorgeous, I love pastry cream, I love shoe buns. Absolutely beautiful. This is definitely a dessert worth sharing with people. How gorgeous was that croc en bouche? I definitely want to see your photos of it. And don't forget to comment below. I want to know what you want to see in 2023. It's a brand new year, so get excited.